Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Week 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. Just a reminder, this is a sandbox series and the main constraint is that I can only use the Orion carrier plane as my first stage. That is the only first stage we get to use. So our payload capacity to low Earth orbit is limited and as a result we are incentivized to drill for fuel on places like the Moon or Mars and also use nuclear thermal propulsion and ion engines because they give you more delta V for a smaller mass, uh, generally speaking. It depends exactly how that all shakes up. But anyway, that's the idea. Uh, so here we are looking at a mock-up of a unit that's going to lift hydrogen off of the surface of the moon into low lunar orbit in order to refuel our nuclear thermal propulsion ship because that will require the hydrogen. And this is just a mock-up so that I could get the numbers, but it'll give you an idea of how it all works. Uh, we've got a huge uh, liquid hydrogen tank up here. We've got liquid hydrogen and oxygen for the engine, the lander engine. And I've created a new lander engine. Now it's sort of on this node because I don't have a center node on this. I ultimately made a model and blender of this. I used this mock-up in order to get the numbers. So this engine is the SE2010T. It is a new engine. It is capable of throttling down to 25% using hydrogen and oxygen, 60 ignitions, 454 vacuum uh, specific impulse, and 102.5 kilonewtons. So that's its specs. And basically it's like the common extensible uh, cryogenic engine, the CC, that was a modification on the RL-10. And I just sort of made my own version of that. So that's what that is. Um, it operates at 800 PSI, by the way. That is what it's set at, and that's what the size is related to. This is a 6-meter tank. That's why the engine looks really small compared to it. Uh, so it's, a, you know, because hydrogen is not very dense, 6 meters, and then 5.1. Now, there is an obvious problem with this, and that is that I tip landers over on the moon all the time. Uh, so this isn't ideal, being tall and all. Though the center of mass is sort of down here because we've got oxygen down here and if you really put the oxygen down below it's even better and on landing it'll be lower because this will be empty and we have to pick up the fuel right anyway let's take a look at the version that i actually modeled and we have it here on the back of the orion carrier plane with the methane stage it's upside down right now but you can see basically this is the lh2 tank that is currently empty this is just a procedural tank i didn't actually model this tank because I wanted it separate anyway. And you can see its numbers, utilization 91, just aluminum lithium normal. And the dry mass, you can see it's a horrible wet to dry mass ratio because it's hydrogen, uh, but that's how it is. So that's just a procedural tank. And then uh, we have just one part for uh, this, including the RCS thrusters. Uh, that's the oxygen tank, that's a torus, and then the hydrogen tank, which is just a normal tank. And I made sure to get the volumes right. Uh, they're, they take into consideriza uh, consideration utilization limits. So yeah, they are what they are. And the RCS thrusters are hydrogen oxygen RCS operating at 400 uh, seconds of ISP. I mean, how legit that is, is a question mark. I know people were trying to develop it. We could go with just cold gas hydrogen thrusters. Those will get about 260 seconds ISP potentially. So that is an option, but I decided to go for the simplest idea. And also this comes with a fuel cell, hopefully. I don't see it here, but that hopefully will operate outside. So that's our power. We'll just have a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, simplest thing. And of course the SE2010T that I showed previously. Now I had to tuck in the landing legs. I'm just using the stock landing legs with tweak scale. I had to tuck them in because otherwise it wouldn't fit in the fairings, so sorry about that. Uh, but I didn't want to integrate it into the landing legs into the lander. I could have, but they I haven't figured out suspension properly yet, and it's safer just to use the stock landing legs. Otherwise, I could have made a custom one that sort of wrapped around and would be better, better able to tuck in. But the reason why it has to be a tall lander is because we have a limited amount of space on here. So... Uh, maybe if instead of having this adapter, we had the full diameter of this and a larger fairing, I might develop that, but I don't have it right now. We'll see if I need a different fairing and adapter. Of course, that'll be heavier dry mass, but if 
that saves us from tipping over on the moon that can help. So let me sort out staging and then we will get going and see if this actually works as far as landing at the location we need on the moon and then oh and let's make sure about uh, MLI layers. We've got full MLI layers there. Ah, we need MLI layers here. I we might want some radiators. We'll mm, yeah, maybe we need radiators. I'll just put those on. And so delta V is going to be interesting. And I'll put them offset from the RCS thrusters. And we probably only need two. Let's see what KSP Interstellar has to say. It doesn't really say anything about heat production, so um, it doesn't know about boil off necessarily. Hopefully something knows about boil off that can make use of the radiators. I don't know how much we need. That's an extra 0.27 tons a piece. I'd rather not have that because it's uh, it's that's a lot compared to the dry mass of this. I'll make them really small. I'll do 0.2 tons worth of radiators and we'll see how that works out for us. Okay, we'll see. Okay, I think we're lined up properly. Here we go, throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. I mean, it is a fully reusable launch system with the Star Stage 2 anyway, and we're using Star Stage 2 here instead of a Hydrolox disposable stage, which is our emergency one for really heavy stuff that needs to go to the moon. Uh, because, after all, the, the lander can get to the moon on its own as long as it's not carrying the extra hydrogen load. It's got plenty of Delta V. I mean, not humongous, not like a tug would. It's still got the empty tank on top of it. It's still technically got a payload, right? The empty tank is still a payload. But, yeah, it's got plenty of Delta V to work with. The question is how quickly our ISRU landers can actually refuel it. That's a whole other business. The RCS thruster placement on the lander isn't exactly ideal for docking, though. I might reconsider that. Right now, they were placed where it would be most convenient to place them. Okay, that's 4,000. Separation. Bearings. Bearings. And let's make sure we're controlling correctly. Control from here. All right. RCS and ignition. The rotation. Okay, and let's see how much delta we really we really have. This stage can probably boost it to a slightly high orbit initially. Again, because it's lighter because of the empty tank. In fact, even if this tank was full of hydrogen, it could probably get it to a nice orbit. And that actually allows for another use of this in that if this is full of hydrogen it can be used as a refueler and there'll be enough delta V here to actually transfer to the moon and get into orbit around the moon as long as it's sort of a loose orbit and rendezvous with something. So this this whole system can actually be used to launch something from Earth to the moon potentially. Uh, this particular load of hydrogen I mean. The fact that I made the lander a separate part from the, this hydrogen tank means it can carry other things too. So that would be good. Let me just check that the fuel cell works. Yes, it does. We are recharging now. I'll just leave it on. We do have an internal comm unit on this. I don't know how well that'll work out. Okay, we have made orbit 191 by 171 will be good enough for now. And we are going to extend the tiny, tiny radiators that we have. <laughs> they look so cute. Uh, anyway, hopefully it'll do something. Let me turn off RCS. We still have some boil off. We can see by the 0, 0.00 there on both of those numbers. Uh, heat penetration is 93 milliwatts, but it's going up. So, yeah. Boil off loss very small right now but again the fact that the heat penetration is going up does not make me happy so let's try and get to the moon quickly well we probably want a high inclination i always have to increase the inclination whenever i get there all right that'll be what we do but it's going to take an hour to get to the maneuver node 
Oh, I guess the fuel cell could be using... Hold on, let me switch off the fuel cell. To see if that's... Well, it looks like the oxygen is balanced without the fuel cell on, so there's no oxygen boil off, there's just hydrogen boil off. So it's only the fuel cell using a little bit extra. Uh, though that boil off... Uh, no, the hydrogen boil off cannot be from star stage 2. That is because star stage 2 does not use hydrogen. So, yep, that is just in that tank. Pretty sure it's not reading the burn time right, because this is all flipped around and confusing to it. Hopefully the engine works. So we'll use a little bit of star stage 2, but we need to leave enough for it to deorbit itself. Alright, we should probably get started early. Okay, that's what I will reserve. All right. Now well, it's probably a little bit more than I needed to, but okay, RCS is on. Moving away. The node is gone though. Well, while it's turning prograde, I will um get the node back. But now, yeah, we should have started way earlier. Okay, ignition. So 5,800 meters per second when it doesn't have anything in the tank. So if we've got 3,000 for transfer, and that uh, that would leave 2,800 for capture and landing. It's a little bit tight, but it's doable. And we just used uh, some of Star Stage 2, so we should be better off. For each of the NTP vehicle's tanks, it will take two runs with this to fill it. Nope, there it is. All right. That's good enough for now. Uh, let me go back to star stage two and make sure it deorbits because we left it in a uh, higher orbit. And ignition. Okay, well, we'll presume that gets recovered. Okay. Following along with that mission. Oh, maybe I'll have to time warp in the in the tracking station. Don't know how Kerbalism is gonna deal with things. Heat penetration is still sort of going up as time goes on. Let me see how time warping goes here. Ah, uh, yeah, incoherent electric charge behavior. I'll just go to the tracking station. I know I can turn it off, but I'm worried that if I turn it off, there's act an actual effect that's going to mess things up, so. Okay, we are in Lunar SOI. Let's check to see if we need to make a correction so that we can hit our base, our ISRU location, efficiently. After all, we don't want to hang out in orbit around the moon for a long time and have everything boil off. So... It looks like that's our site. Our current orbit's not too bad. Mm, though a little bit high right now. By the time we get there, it'll probably move over to where our orbit is, though. So I probably won't correct it right now. We'll see how it goes. The electric charge went away, even though I had the fuel cell on the whole time. See that? So, yes, it looks like electric charge behavior is incoherent with Kerbalism. I don't know. I mean, obviously we've seen that with the crewed missions already, but now even with an uncrewed mission, there's no reason the electric charge should have went away. We have a fuel cell on. It doesn't even matter about our orientation to the sun. It's a fuel cell. We had the fuel, we have the hydrogen and oxygen here. It is replenishing now, but Kerbalism was just not able to calculate that it was replenishing charge. So, we really have a problem with that. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is a problem. I'll just ignite the engine, it's slightly more efficient. We have 60 ignitions right now. Oh, that's low. Okay. Alright, well, let's proceed out here. I'll, I'll follow along with it since we needed to recharge, but that'll limit me to this level of time warp. 
3,200 meters per second is fine for a landing right now, though I'm sure we're getting some oil off. Okay, yeah, we're pretty well off on the alignment with our landing location, and that was due to no effort on my part. I basically only want Kerbalism for the radiation simulation. But in the long run, it might be less frustrating to just remove it. And we'll add appropriate mass for shielding. We'll see what we can do. It might be some other mod. I'll see what I yeah what else I can remove that might fix it. I'm sure this is not how Kerbalism is supposed to be. But KSB Interstellar is sort of required as far as I'm concerned for the future of this particular series. Okay, ignition. I do want to get into future technologies. So if it's KSB Interstellar that's uh, acting up and confusing Kerbalism, then I can't do anything about that. But in this case, Kerbal uh, KSB Interstellar isn't adding the megajoules thing, right? That's only something that happens to solar panels. With the fuel cell, it's not adding megajoules or messing with the electric charge in any way. So, in theory, this should be KSP Interstellar free. And still, we're having a problem with Kerbalism. I'm pretty sure in stock, when you use a fuel cell, it doesn't randomly deplete the electric charge when you're away from it. I... Well, we're coming up on the next fun part, which is... Can these RCS thrusters control this properly at their location? And also, can I land it without tipping it over? Delta V wise, we're looking great. I mean, there should be no problem with the amount of Delta V we have left landing at our intended landing site. Okay, that's good enough for now. And yeah, the landing site's just right there. I mean, we could tilt a little bit. We'll do that on the descent initialization burn. Okay. So that's what we'll do right there. It's only a four minute stage time now because we used all that fuel already. Now I hope it can throttle low enough so that we can... Uh, it's a little bit too high, the thrust weight ratio. What I want is it to be able to throttle low enough so we keep going down at the bottom end. It's only a 25% throttle range though. Uh, so it only goes down to 25%. So maybe I'll adjust that since I'm being arbitrary. I think the CC actually went down to 10%. So maybe I'll allow it to go down to 10% and just copy the CC on that. The common extensible cryogenic engine since everybody assures me that that is a real thing. So. Don't need a whole lot of time to land here. Okay, I think we'll start out here. It's dark though. Okay, there's our landing site right there. We're coming in pretty steeply. Our thrust weight ratio is going to be even worse now. I mean, it's going to be higher, therefore harder to thrall down to a safe level with. And I'm going to have to shut down there again. We're using a lot of ignitions like this though. The problem is this thing has a lot more thrust rate ratio than I'm used to for landing on the moon. I'm running the RCS to keep the fuel settled. Yeah, we're going to end up hovering like this. Okay, it's going to be tough, folks. Please go down. No. Okay, we landed. We landed. <laughs> we opted a little bit, but we landed. The good thing is, I uh, realizing that I might hop, uh, made sure sort of that we were going to land at the bottom of the tank. We'll tell anybody. <laughs> um, so the surface of the tank is helping us stay stable on landing. Shh. <laughs> anyway, uh, let us hook into the logistics network and so we're starting we've got some of the fuel and we're getting topped off by the 
ISR units over there were a little bit far off because of how landing worked out. But okay, let's let's get the date here. It is July seventeenth, and somewhat at night. And let's see. We're just gonna hang out here and see how long it takes. I won't keep this tank locked. Let's uh, unlock that. We want to see full load here. But we have to keep in mind that we've got this Mars window, so we've got to do other stuff in the meantime. So if this takes too long, we're gonna have to turn to. Oh no, not incoherent behavior again. I mean, I think it's refueling at a pretty good pace overall. I think we have two units doing hydrogen and one doing the oxygen. We'll get more hydrogen converting units around here later. There's a whole question about whether we can turn away from it. I guess we can try time warping and tracking station and see what happens. Obviously it's working out fine here, but who knows what happens in the tracking station. So let's find out. Okay, that's about a week right there. That's a week. Let's see. It hopped a little bit. It didn't do squat. <laughs> it definitely it definitely did not replenish a whole week's worth of fuel, folks. And it lost the electric charge, too. Oh, that sucks. These guys aren't full up either. We could draw the fuel from them, but... Okay, well, um, I'll take the time and let's see if we can time warp here and get the propellant and see how long it takes. So we're at the 24th here. I'm just going to step away and let it run and we'll see how long it takes. It's interesting. We seem to have hit a snag with the liquid hydrogen. Let's come out of time warp. It's, uh, I think the boil off's gotten too high, maybe. I don't know. And we got 3 watts, it's 0.03 kilograms, which doesn't seem like much per hour. These guys are topped off. Maybe it's better if I do transfer what they've got in. Maybe they're not... Um, let me get the plug out and transfer the resources direct. And then plug back in. Oh! Uh, it... Uh, hmm. Yeah, it taps these out first, and I don't know why it takes from... Oh, maybe fuel priority? Um, flow priority zero. Minus ten. Let me increase the priority here. Will that change it? Doesn't seem to be doing anything right now. Okay, toggle plug. Request resources, plug back in, still disappears. It favors the other things more than this. I guess we'll unplug temporarily. <laughs> and uh, I guess we can get the oxygen right now. But basically we need the other things to have about 60,000 total, so 20,000 hydrogen each. We can see it accumulate here so I'll just time warp like this and wait we're on the 26th so it's been two days but then it's complicated how the accounting is gonna work out so let's see how long it takes to get 20,000 here uh, incoherent behavior again mind you the ISRU units have a nuclear reactor so we've got all kinds of energy production here We've had solar panels, we've had the nuclear reactors, we have fuel cells, none of them work right. <laughs> At high time warp. Well, at least that number, the hydrogen accumulation, is going up faster than the boil-off seems to be increasing our empty capacity. Having to sit here while the fuels accumulate, though, is not ideal. Now, when we have more landers than just three, That'll be fine. Well, better. Uh, but now it's obviously painful. Plus side, none of the landers have many parts, and so it's not going to be very laggy around here because 
everything, a lot of the stuff is built into a single part that I made, but uh, the physics easing is a little bit tricky and how they hop all the time, that's not great. Okay, it looks like the amount of hydrogen we have available is more than our capacity. Whoop, it hopped again. When it hops, it is no longer landed and therefore no longer connected to the logistics network. That was why simple logistics disappeared. Then, all right, let's request resources. Top off the oxygen while we're at it. And so, yeah, if we sit here, it's all right. If we try and time warp in the tracking station, it doesn't work. We're on July 3rd, by the way, for reference. Uh, probably if the first time warp had actually worked at the tracking station, we would have been able to fill up in a week but because it didn't we were not able to so anyway we can use it and that is good uh, the 3546 should be good enough to bring it uh, we get it to orbit with 2200 tops that's all we need to get it to orbit as long as we transfer the hydrogen out of it then it'll of course be lighter and have more delta v to come back down so it's got enough to go up transfer the fuel and come back down and I checked that when designing it, of course. So we've got this, and it seems to work out all right, though it might need some tweaking, and I might need to get rid of Kerbalism or something. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I am going to get another tank to our NTP ship, because we will need more fuel than we currently have there. And right now we only have one of these tanks here. We'll need much more than that. And probably uh, ion system as well to boot but let me launch one more of these tanks to attach to it okay here we go with the launch of another tank to our nuclear thermal propulsion ship the st louis sas on throttle is up and ignition and launch we have 53 days until the mars window and that's approximate it could be plus or minus a couple of weeks So if we need some time, we can take it. Okay, and shut down. That's close enough. Separation. Bearing set. Bearing set. And make sure we're controlling from the right direction. We're not right now. And ignition. Okay. Okay, we are in orbit 221 by 201, and we have about 400 meters per second to help with the rendezvous, and so we will do that. Got all the other things we need. We will put Kerbals on this first trip out to Mars. We're probably not going to try to send a lander. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll send a lander separately. That would be better. But... Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I don't know. I'll keep Kerbalism in just for checking out whether it can handle this Mars mission. We'll probably follow the mission out and everything. Okay, ignition. Okay, there it is. Okay. I'm gonna keep the stage with it since that yields a more favorable RCS thruster arrangement and we need to slow down a lot. Well, seems like we are over North America so comms will be fine for the duration here. Let me sneak on behind our St. Louis nuclear propulsion ship, though currently without the actual nuclear propulsion. Okay, we have a dock, and let us separate our stage here. The ship will have to move forward. The stage does not have thrusters that can move it like that. 133 tons right now. There has been a little bit of boil off, but it's been out here for a while, 44 days. So I think it's not too bad. 
Okay, and this just needs to deorbit itself. We will not follow it down. There's plenty of fuel to deorbit. So, as we depart the ship. Off we go. And that will. It can recover itself, it'll be fine. It's got plenty of resources, but as this spins around, I'll wrap it up here. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.